As autumn gives way to winter, brothers Chris and Casey Kiefer are drawn to the wild places on a live to hunt, hunt to live mission, dropped with very little to rely on but each other. Each new season brings with it a new arena and new challenges. Together, the Kiefer brothers have faced angry predators, extreme hunger, impassable terrain, and volatile shifting weather patterns. They've explored hundreds of miles of desolate mountain ranges, unsettled tundras, raging rivers, and the unpredictable perils of territories where few are willing to go. All for the love of the hunt, to test themselves, to test each other, not to prove anything to anyone, but to feed the fire inside. This is Dropped. Amazing grace, what sweet sight. See her dressed in white. I once was lost, but now I'm found through her amazing grace and a soft cotton lace. Northern Saskatchewan, the land of living skies. Landlocked and sparsely populated, this diverse province has a reputation of being equal parts beautiful and brutal. The grasslands of southern and central Saskatchewan surrender to the thick boreal forests of the north, where black bears, wolves, and moose patrol towering thickets of spruce and pine. This is where the Kiefer brothers will carve out a living for the next 30 days. With a change in arena comes a change in the rules. The brothers have access to thousands of acres of Canadian wilderness by way of a remote lake. They've been afforded a motorized fishing boat, just big enough to transport their gear and a limited supply of fuel reserves. For the duration of their journey, this boat will be their lifeline, allowing them to search for the lake trout, northern pike and walleye that soar through the depths beneath them, while providing the opportunity to scout and hunt the vast expanses of the game-rich northern timber. The Kiefer brothers hold tags for a moose and a black bear, but a tag is far from a guarantee. Tides have turned in northern Saskatchewan, and the Kiefer brothers are riding high on the thrill of the kill they've worked so hard for. A North Country patriarch has fallen after over three weeks of grinding it out together. It's time to reap the rewards as they begin the task of caping, quartering, and packing the moose back to camp, with confidence that they now have the fuel they need to make it out alive. That is such a big animal. Oh, he's giant, man. Well, I think we'd probably take him in quarters like we normally do. Yeah. We'll he's, just... He's laying, like, perfect. Yeah. He's, oh, it's perfect. I think we start, we'll go up the back, come around that, yeah. that side right yeah. there. Up this leg. Then we can start working this way, right? And then we can maneuver him how we want to do it from there on the back side, and we can finish out his back hams later. But if we do it in quarters, yeah. we should be able to take care of him fairly quickly. It's a big animal, though. Yep. A lot of work. You want to cut them up the, up the back first? Yeah, get them right down the center if we can. Okay. And then once we get that, I'll bring that down here and then we can tie this cut from the leg up to it. All right. All right, let's do this. On the high end, a mature northern Saskatchewan bull moose can weigh up to 1,500 pounds on the hoof. A moose of this size can yield up to 500 pounds of usable meat, but it takes a lot of work to break it down properly. First, an incision is made along the animal's spine. A sharp blade is used to completely remove all hide and hair from the meat. Next, they begin to break the moose into smaller parts that they can physically carry. Both hind quarters are removed, as well as the head, front quarters, back straps, and tenderloins. Individual portions are packed in game bags before the heavy haul begins. The brothers must pack out every single edible and usable piece of the animal. It's written in Saskatchewan law and a true sportsman's creed.
the real work has begun in northern Saskatchewan, as the Kiefer brothers continue to break down the bull moose they were dreaming about just hours ago. For the first time in weeks, a hot red meat meal is on the horizon. All right, now we got them this far. Yep. We just want to take off this front shoulder, work that back strap that way. Yeah, we got to get this cut to go underneath. Let's get as much weight off them before we got to start thinking. maneuvering them. As then we can roll. Yeah. We can even get this strap out. I can peel that side back a little bit and get this strap out. Probably get the other strap out from where he's laying right now too. Yeah. Before we so flip him over. We I'll flip. take on this front shoulder right here. I just want to keep working on this. All right. Here. I'll take this cut right here down further, that way we can tie into it. In these moments, silence says more than words ever could. Each brother understands their own role in the preservation of this animal. They've been in this situation countless times before. Their instincts kick in as they work together in harmony, with a complete understanding and appreciation of what Saskatchewan has offered them. We are working on our moose here that Casey got and just going through the meat right now. The back straps are unbelievable. How big is that strap? Look at that meat. I am. I mean, look at all that. I'm not even halfway down. I still got over halfway to go. Huge. And it tastes very good. Well, speaking of tastes very good, how about we, uh, how about I get us a little fire going here so that we can uh, Maybe have some of that back strap right here. Yeah, I'm all for it. It doesn't get any better than groceries straight out of the back of that moose right oh, there. That's about as best as you can get right there. Yep. So, get a fire going. All right, I'll get a fire going. I'm gonna have some moose. Just enjoy this moment and keep going. Keep working on it, but it's gonna taste good. Although the brothers are grateful for the fish and berries that have kept them alive, the thought of a fire cooked moose steak is something they can't ignore. It's time to reap the rewards. Casey cuts the steak while Chris readies the fire for the feast. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. Moose meat on the fire. That is a sweet, sweet sound right Man, there. These are gonna be delicious. Sizzling meat on the fire. I'm just glad it's not fish. <laughs> it's, hey, there's nothing wrong with fish, but listen, it's time for some red meat. No, oh, this is gonna be so good. Well, I got this jet oil rocking and rolling for a little coffee. That's also gonna be very good. That is a good way to kinda wrap this up with this guy. A little coffee and a moose steak never hurt anybody. It's gonna be delicious. Oh, it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? It's unbelievable, man. We were in like a complete state of like one of the lowest I've had in a long time on ground. Just misery, it's day after day. It's like Groundhog Day. Get up, do the same exact thing, try the same exact thing. All while second guessing yourself, but knowing what you're doing is what you should be doing, you know? I mean, that's, it's tough. But it all comes together. <sighs> Coffee. Got a mug you can fill up right here. <laughs> Excellent. to cutting this guy up. Still got a long way to go, but we're well into it. Oh yeah, but I'm gonna have a lot better outlook on life right now with a nice warm moose steak. Nice thing is, there's a lot more where this came from. Want the honors? Sure. You shot him. Yeah, I'm not gonna deny that. And plus a few kill over then. You go down and... Oh, meat. <laughs> so good. Never gets old, man. Barehanding meat off the fire. That is a tasty little delight right there. A little better than goat. 
so much better than goat. Oh man, been an amazing trip. We still got a ton of work to do, but it's just nice to sit back and just reflect for a hot second. I mean, unbelievable. So I was thinking rather than <clears throat> build a cache like we traditionally do, could probably do like a meat pole. I got paracord. Do a meat pole and hang them, especially with the amount of bears that are around here. Bears? There ain't no bears. <laughs> bears. I've been hunting for how long to see a bear. We had one sneaky little boo-boo come in there and yeah, I never did see him. Never did see him. Well, he snuck up on me, but I never did see him. Although this does allow us to basically divide and conquer, which is nice. Yeah. Like, you know, if you're gonna work on meat, taking care of that, I can actually, I'm just gonna try and find Run and gun. a bear. I mean, yeah. I can cruise around and check some spots and see what I can come up with, but. We still got a lot of work to do to get this guy out, so first things first, let's eat, pack him out, and we can decide in the morning. Fueled by a fire roasted, protein rich red meat, the Kiefer brothers continue the task at hand. They must finish quartering the moose before packing it back to camp. That's the last of the meat? Yep, that's okay. the last of it. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. We can take these game bags, I'll take one, fill it with the good stuff. Tenders and Tenders straps. and back straps, separate yep. it. Yep. All the neck meat can go into a, another yep. tag bag. I can load this pack with all, with that. all the meat. Yep. Strap that in, be good to go. Yep. We can throw the rib cages in there if we want. Then we'll put tag bags over the hind quarters and the front shoulders. And then we can just yep. shoulder them and hoof them out. Yeah, I think I got more of those bags right here. All right, I just want to make sure we have four good bags. Yeah, we got plenty. We got enough. For the hind quarters. And then if you have a smaller one. These are all the same size. Okay, so give me one of those. So it should be four for hinds, and then one for tenders and straps, and yep. then one for all the neck meat. And we're good. All right. All right, that a bunch of is a back strap, buddy. Right there. That is a back strap. Look at that. Sweet. And what's that? Din din. Little tenderloin. These tenderloins are the size of a white tail's back strap. All right, when I get this up, will you open this bag? I will, as soon as I get this last back strap in here. Okay. Okay. So this is already bloody. Right there. All right. So we got burger meat, that's stew meat, and shoulder, and all the excess extras. And then this is going to be perfect. All right. I'm going to lift this open. You want to throw it in there? Yep. Heavy on the bottom. This is a lot heavier. All right. Ready? Okay. Good. Perfect. Put that one in. Perfect. Okay. okay. It's not a long walk down there, but we got a lot. Yep. So and we got to get through a lot. Yeah. I'll well, just take our time. We're still on it. With game bags loaded, the heavy lifting begins. A hind quarter on a bull moose can weigh upwards of 150 pounds. Between the brothers and the boat lies nearly impassable terrain. Actually pretty solid. One foot in front of the other, Chris and Casey press on. Good. Powered by the very animal whose weight they're shouldering. That's a lot of good meat. In the North Country, nothing comes easy. It's not a long walk down there, but we got a lot. Yep. So we got to get through a lot. Yeah. I'll just take our time. 
still on it. Every aspect of a do-it-yourself moose hunt can turn into a battle, but the Kiefer brothers' calculated decision to hunt near the water paid off, <laughs> leaving a relatively short pack from butcher to boat. A weight is lifted, knowing they no longer have to worry about where their next meal comes from. A lot of good meat. All right, I will take down what I can now, come back for the rest. All right, we're rolling. Starting the pack out process right now. It's really not that bad of a walk. It's just all the, all the deadfall and all the slash you gotta fall over and climb over, which has been the most troubling. But that's all right. We'll make it happen. Sooner than later, we'll get through this stuff. Oh, okay. I think we can manage through here. Okay. <laughs> Coming to the end of the first pack out here. I'm trying to get this stuff to the boat. And that has been whew, a little bit difficult. But oh, this pack makes it easy. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. All right. First load's down here already. I'm gonna go back up and get more. It's not that bad. It's probably a couple hundred yards up up through there. Really couldn't have asked for an easier, better pack out. And I think the adrenaline's still going from what just happened. So it's just so much fun. Man, I love this. First it's a low, then it's a high, like you've never had before. Anybody that's never experienced this, you don't know what you're missing. Back to the grind. Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna throw this in the boat. Okay, let's see if I can do this. One. Okay. Okay. Successfully made it on the first uh, pack out. Now we're just gonna keep doing it. I got a bunch left. Try to simplify it. Take all the excess meat, all the stew meat, all that kind of stuff, and take it first in the packs, and then we can carry those hind quarters. If we do it right, we can carry those hind quarters on our backs and uh, the front shoulders, and then come back for the last, the hide and the antlers first. But I don't know. It's really not that bad of a hike. We've moved a bunch of sticks and stuff out of the way to keep going, but it's good stuff. Taking a load down to the boat. Here we go. This is uh, actually not too terrible. One of the better packs that we've ever had to do. It's not too far. Doesn't make the moose any lighter. But in the grand scheme of things, I'd pack this moose as far as I had to to get him out. Whoa! That's the hard part about packing, is the moose weighs just so much that it takes your balance. It kind of throws your balance out of whack, especially when you just have them on one shoulder like this and not in a pack. Shoulder on shoulder. into the boat. Trip number one. A lot more to go. Few things in life offer a better feeling than the fruits of a good day's work. The Kiefer brothers arrived on a hunt to live mission. And because of today's success, because of their patience and perseverance, they live to hunt another day. Saskatchewan is forever changing, forever challenging, but one constant is that Chris and Casey will have each other's back no matter what is thrown their way. What are you gonna do with all this freedom? What are you gonna do with all this freedom? 
These days are yours, your hands are free. Where you gonna go, who you gonna be? It's your time, it's your parade. What you gonna do, what you gonna say? There was a time you were in chains. Now just yourself remains. Look in my eyes, there's no need to explain. You'll never wear those chains again. Extraction is still days away. There's more work to be done, more hunts to embark on. But for now, the brothers reflect on the very reason they get dropped each fall. The blood and the sweat, the challenge and the reward, the struggle, the compromise, the teamwork, the ebbs and the flows, the opportunity to not only survive, but to be alive.